Welcome to our Star Trek Discovery After Show. I'm me. I'm Christian Blatt. Joined again by the delightful Nikki Bailey. Hello. So uh, we, uh, we we took a little cat nap last week. So this week we have to talk about episodes three and four. So that's yeah. People of Earth and Forget Me Not. So we're mm-hmm. going to talk about both of those. So uh, no time to waste. Dive right in. Nikki Bailey, what did you think of episode three? I felt like we were finally back to a Star Trek show. Like I felt like. It felt like Star Trek again. I was like, oh, wait, this has TNG vibes. And um, I was like excited. Like I, I uh, you know, I felt like it was interesting to sort of, you know, I, I've decided that Discovery has explainer episodes and action episodes. And so episode three was definitely an explainer. Got a lot of, you know, exposition about what had happened over the last 900 years, what, what Michael has found out, what she's been doing over the last year. But also, we got to see the crew embrace her, and it was like, it was just like, like the crew and Saru's the captain. It was just, it was like it felt like Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree. The first two episodes, uh, I guess, were necessary because of the way season two ended. I was so glad that uh, that Burnham and the rest of the crew got back together at the end of episode two. I thought we were going to get half the season uh, trying to get them back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, me too. So uh, to get right into it and uh, to get to go to Earth, come on, you know, that was uh, that four drive comes in handy. Yeah, I know the uh, the spore drive has turned out uh, very convenient in this season. Very, very uh, convenient. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what they find when they get to Earth. That the Federation is not there, and that for all intents and purposes, there really isn't a Federation. Yeah. And uh, what that says, I mean, that's such an important part of the fabric of Star Trek. Obviously, is the Federation. Yeah. You now we have the United Earth Defense Force. Um, you know, the Federation no longer on Earth. It's like, whoa, 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 so what are you doing? What, if there's no Federation on Earth, what's happening? I I, I actually felt a little undone by that. Like, it was like, we already knew the Federation was gone, but to get to Earth and like see the force fields around Earth and to be greeted with hostility from Earth, I was like, you know, because I, I watch the show as though I am a part of the show. And so me as a crew member on the Discovery was like, uh-uh, no, you did not. Um, so uh, it was surprising. I, I have to say, though, um, I, I love how many Black women we're seeing in Star Trek this year. I was yeah. loving the diversity, loving it. Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, and we can uh, reference that when we talk about episode four as well, uh, that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, Discovery has uh, been a a very, uh, very inclusive cast in terms of its humanoids, but also your aliens, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, the original series, of course, you know, really, it was just like, it was really Spock and a bunch of earthlings, you know? Right, so right. I like that we, we have sort of this, I mean, not, you know, not to discredit TNG that, you know, from the second season on, you did have, you know, you had an Android, you had a, you had a Klingon on the bridge, you know? So right. uh, I think that uh, it's, it's pretty great to see, you know? And um, I think that, uh, you know, we got uh, a lot of good stuff in this one, though, I thought. And uh, there there was some decent character work, which I think, as we saw, they were building towards uh, a lot of character stuff in episode four. Um, Absolutely. What, uh, from your notes, what are some of the, the highlights that stand out for you in episode three? Uh, in episode three, I think just one of the things is uh, the conversation that kind of happened sort of throughout the episode between Saru and Michael about who was going to be the captain, like that sort of unspoken thing that was in the air. And then when he finally said, hey, I think we should step into the other room and have a conversation about this. And, you know, her, her, her even saying, you don't know, I don't know if it's ever been me. I don't know if I've ever been the person who should be captain. Like it was, it kind of, to me felt right. Like, like all along, it felt like, 
um, Michael's supposed to be the protagonist, so shouldn't she be the captain? But no, she can't be the captain. It had to be Saru. So to me, that felt like a really incredible, that was a, 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 an insightful moment about those two characters and an insightful moment about what Michael has learned about herself being away from the Federation in the last year and knowing that she has work to do to get her mind back to, I'm a Federation officer. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so much change in Michael. I mean, really from the first two episodes of the series, you know, when she basically, uh, you know, has the attempted coup of the the, the Shinjo. So uh, I think it was, uh, it's interesting to see because you could tell even, even after, uh, even after Lorca brought her aboard the Discovery, you could see that what she really you know, her, her designs were always on being a captain of a ship. And then given mm -hmm. the opportunity, she's like, Oh no, 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 that's not for me. Yeah. And I, I think she realizes about herself, but then she also realizes how well suited Saru is for it. Mm -hmm. And I was glad that it was sort of like, uh, you know, he was just like, Oh, we, we don't need to talk about it. it it's you. And I think that, uh, you know, th there probably are, there's probably not a contingent of people on, discovery that we're holding out for Michael to actually take over as captain. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, uh, I agree. uh, let's see, uh, Saru, uh, Michael B. asked, Saru is the only alien captain in the franchise. I'm going to assume not. I would have to think, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, starring on one of the series. Yeah. I would say that that's probably accurate, but I'm sure we've met, we've met alien captains. Uh, of, of we have, I can't think of any right now, but I'm just, yeah. I have like, I have some battle sequence in mind, which could totally be from star Wars if, if but um, it's probably not. Uh, but I have some secret battle sequence in mind where we've seen an alien as a captain. So definitely think that's been there before. Right, exactly. So uh, in, in any case uh, in, in this episode, uh, we're also, kind of uh de dealing obviously with the, the the this this huge depletion of dilithium from the burn and uh i think that uh you know they they handle it really well but you can kind of see i, I thought that uh there was this nice well pun intended i guess i did not when i thought it in my head but it's a very humanizing moment where there's this adversary you know this like this like pirate and they basically just kick his helmet off and he's just sort of like a, you know, a haggard, yeah. haggard homeless dude, just been yeah, floating exactly. around, he, he's, been floating he, around he, trying to save the people of Titan. Yeah. Or, Titus or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that, uh, that that was interesting, you know, and then just sort of like dealing with the amount of, you know, just dealing with the dilithium, you know, and uh, talk a little bit about that showdown to me. That's a very Star Trek moment. I mean, it was so uh, Star Trek. Yeah, this is when we get to see the Federation at work, even when there is no Federation. Basically, the Discovery is the only Federation, at least in in that quadrant. And they're just like, yeah, we're gonna, you know, instead of fighting, have you tried talking to each other? And mm -hmm. you know, obviously, no one had tried that in you know a few hundred years, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it, it was like it was old school Star Trek diplomacy at work. And it was like, oh wait, uh, this is this is right. This is this is who we are. This is this is the Federation. And I was really glad to see it. Um and also really glad, I really liked that um uh I just lost my train of thought. Um this idea that like uh even if there's no Federation, like they, they almost kind of think about and talk about the Federation almost like it's a religion. And and sort of like, oh, well, I might be getting into episode four here. Let me pause on that. Um, but the the that that even that showdown though, like I felt like, you know, Michael taking the ship out and and the whole like, you know, book is like, we should do this. And she's like, no, wait, the start the, the discovery is gonna gonna do what I know that they're gonna do. And then you had Philippa saying to Saru, you need to, and Saru's like, no, wait, I think I know what's gonna happen here. And it was like already we could see that their work as sort of captain and number one, there was already an implicit trust there. And at the end of the thing, at the end of the episode where he says, trust needs to be an assumption between the two of us. Like it's, it, you know, he didn't know what she was doing, but he trusted that she was gonna get it done. And so that felt really Star Trek-y as well. And I, I was pleased about that. 
Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think that, uh, you know, it, it, it is, it, it, it's, uh, it's a very unique thing from science fiction that you're only really finding in Star Trek. So I like seeing, you know, just sort of this degree of uh, problem solving. And uh, I, I think it's intriguing that, you know, we end up, what is it, 930 years in the future, and there is this quest. There is sort of like, well, this is what we need to find. And what they need to find is this, uh, basically, this transmission from Earth uh, in Admiral uh, Senate's Hall. And, uh, you know, so that's sort of what, what brings them to Earth. And then uh, it, it is definitely the, uh, the character that made me a little nervous in the uh, preview for the season because she really does seem a little bit like kind of like a, another Tilly, you know, I mean, co- you know, personality wise, I think she seemed less like that in episode four, which obviously we'll talk about. Adira, you mean? Yeah. Adira. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think that um, it was, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it was interesting to kind of get the revelation that, you know, I mean, it's at the end of the episode, but she's like, oh yeah, well, because I'm, I'm the Admiral. And yeah. the idea that, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen really, I mean, we haven't seen a trill in a while, right. not since uh, Deep Space Nine, Deep Space but Nine. Uh, yes. yeah. jo- joining us now is our, our own trill, uh, Salman Dax himself, uh, David Weiss, yeah. comedian, funny man, David Weiss, Salman himself, uh, also a proud trill. Uh, and we're talking about episode three at the moment, Sal. Say hello to the people. Hi, people. What's up, America? What's up, Sal? So uh, what we were just, (laughs) this is Nikki, that's Sal. And what we were just talking about was sort of, you know, this revelation at the end of episode three, the uh, idea of the trills. And that was obviously, you know, uh, you you had Dax on Deep Space Nine, but we haven't had any trills really in a while to speak of, not really since Deep Space Nine, you know. So uh, I always found that to be an intriguing species. Um, before we uh, dive into the the trill centric episode of episode four, uh, Sal, your thoughts on kind of that revelation and the fact that it turned out that this uh, this character Adira, who knew a little bit too much, uh, was in fact a, a trill and paired with a host. I kind of like it. Um, brings back a lot of the the old Star Trek stuff, which I think they like to do which is always, you know, uh, red meat for the base, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Any any callbacks to past yeah. series and episodes, it, we're always excited, you know. Yeah. It, it required a pause. Like, my partner and I were, were like, we had to pause and go, wait, Trill? Like, Dax? Yeah. Like, like, Dax. We had to, like, we had to, like, we had to, like, we had to think about it. And then we had a whole conversation about, well, wait, Dax wasn't human. Was Dax was and like, did she have the dots? Like, I couldn't remember what yeah. Dax. We had, to, we had to look up the picture, and we had to like, and, and it was like, wait, this this girl doesn't have dots. Like, how can she be trill? Like, it's it was like a, a full fifteen minute break. Yeah, in the last and in the last like minute of the show. <laughs> minute of episode three. <laughs> yeah, and uh, look, I don't think this is a this is a controversial hot take. Uh, all in on Jadzia Dax. Uh, Esri Dax, I never warmed up to, and uh, that was, I think, only the final season of the show, and uh, it was enough so that I was crazy. like, oh, it could have, it could have ended the year earlier without her. Then, if because, yeah. because that actress Terry Farrell, like she went on to be on Becker, the, right. the sitcom with Becker. Ted Danson. Now, she traded out one more year of DS9 for like five years in syndication. Career standpoint, I understand selfishly. I liked the character. Worf had married her, you know, and uh, I guess they they were able to do some interesting things. But it was like, oh no! But the new host is so annoying. Yeah, uh, no, no. Jadzia was the yeah. only the only Dax for me. So, yeah, yeah. But the reason I bring it up is that I get a really strong Ezri Dax vibe uh, right here, you know, from uh, Adira. Uh, so uh, I was like. I was like, that stands to reason. Yeah. What were you going to say, Sal? Tell me why you get a an Esri Dax. Oh, uh, because uh, I find them both really annoying. 
Oh, and, okay. And they're Very both good. they're both slight, you know. Uh, so uh, yeah, and uh, I, I I I did warm up to the character in episode four, but uh, it was say, like, episode yeah. four had to bring you over. Like, come yep. on. Oh but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, just, we'll circle back for a moment because, uh, uh, because, uh, Sal Dax, you were, uh, you were a little tardy to the party, uh, just overall thoughts on episode three, you know, them going back to earth and, and all that stuff. Say again. So your overall thoughts on episode three, you know, they go back to earth and, uh, you really, know, all that. I really like episode three is my favorite of the four so far. I felt it had the most. Star Trek in it, the spirit of Star Trek, the zeal, the bravado. And I don't think it's an accident that it was directed by uh, Commander Riker. I think that there's... Yeah. I, I've noticed That's... that every Discovery episode is directed by somebody different. And I think that that... Uh, you know, I don't know why, but the episodes lack consistency from one through four. I really feel the difference in tone and style, and it's a little jarring. I would prefer they try and, you know, smooth those bumps out. Yeah, I mean, I understand that you want that consistency, but I mean, most of your episodic television, it, it, it has different directors. Now, you, you maybe have a smaller pool. And uh, I do always appreciate when we get Jonathan Frakes, uh, you know, uh, directing. Um, but uh, I don't know that uh, LeVar Burton has directed any. Where, where, where's he been? You know, so, uh, but. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of the challenges, though, is that, you know, the first two years of Discovery were basically just setting us up for the third year, right? Like, so, like, like we just basically needed all of that so that the show could start. So I feel like this is the beginning of the real show now. And so I feel like it's going to develop a new voice. It's going to ha- and so like I think that I think that over the course of the next season or two it will have a more consistent I I hope it has a more consistent um feel and voice to it because I I agree with you it does feel a bit disjointed stylistically. Um but I'm hoping that like now that they're into like the real story of discovery uh, that we'll find sort of our consistent sort of fallback. I don't want to say tropes, but, um, but just things we know to expect from this particular uh, series. Like, like, I don't think we can say that about this series, even in the third season, we don't know what to expect from it. And, um, and I think it would be nice to get to a place where we could say, reliably oh this is a discovery type thing yeah i get this this is discovery no, i'm not sure that they're not doing that on purpose you know to keep you to keep to keep i think that there's a a thought and I'm, maybe i'm reading too much into this but they seem to want to always bring in more people to discovery and i think that's what they're doing now with the mm. lgbtq plus characters I think they're just trying to make the tent bigger. And I think that, well, that might conflict with the storytelling a little bit. Well, I think that the whole series is that, you know what I mean? I think it, it is, uh, they're ever expanding the tent. And look, let's be honest, there was backlash to the show from sort of, you know, the the same segments of populations uh, of fandom who are like, well, I'm not going to watch a lady Doctor Who. You know, you have sort of that sort of thing. And they're like, I don't like that there's, you know, yeah. uh, there, there's openly gay characters on the show. I don't, you know, I, it's the, uh, the lead is a, is, is an African-American female, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, so you, 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 once you weed that stuff out, then you're able to sort of like you, you trade out sort of a segment of the fandom that you don't really care that you, you don't have anymore. And yeah, I think it, it, it definitely helps bring a lot more people in. And uh, I don't know. I think that uh, I, I, feel like and look it, that sort of was the weird mixed bag with discovery having been set before the cage but obviously being made in the the late 20 teens that you're just like it's so much more progressive than all the shows that came before it in yeah. terms you know in that sense but uh i don't i personally don't find it getting in the way of the stories i can see how there's certainly the potential there for it how it could but i haven't I haven't felt that way yet, but you know, since we're talking I, about interpersonal, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Nikki. I was going to say, I feel like they just are—they're just, you know, with with these two, um, 
sort of gender non-conforming characters in episode four, because I'm I'm guessing we just moved yeah. into episode four. We, well, we'll but, talk um, to that. Yeah, yeah, you can speak to it now, of course. But, yeah. I, but, but this idea of these sort of gender non-conforming characters is just an a more it's just a more overt display of this of of the of the idea of 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 the trill anyway right like the idea that Jadzia Dax had been a man you know the in her la in 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 their last body right so like it's like they you know I think that Star Trek's always played with gender I think they're just uh -huh. doing it in a in a in a much more. I think we now have license because the world has changed. It's now it's now possible to talk about it in a much more overt way, and um, and I think bringing the trill in is a great way to sort of be like, yeah, let's remember that this is a part of the Star Trek universe anyway. This idea that like every species doesn't have two genders, and every you know like so like like it, uh, that gender is changeable or uh, you know so i actually really appreciated that about about the episode four and about the way that they're going about dealing with gender and the idea of it what were you going to say sal i can't tell if you're frozen or just smirking i think that's yeah. an actual that seemed like an actual freeze there yeah <laughs> um but you know uh, as we're talking about uh, interpersonal relationships uh, I did want to touch on one last thing about episode three. Uh, this idea that Burnham and Book spent an entire year together uh, gallivanting the cosmos, as it were, as uh, George O refers to. And uh, they were just friends for that whole year? I mean, not even like a little extra Tranya and something happens, you know, no strings, nothing. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in both of them. Uh, Nikki, do you believe it? Or are they just uh, <laughs> trying to kid themselves that something didn't happen one night? I have in my notes, um, did Book and and um, Burnham really not do it? Swallow. Like, <laughs> Yes. Well, I didn't might hear be what you said. He said it might be a little tough to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, mm, I, I felt like the whole... The whole exchange with Philippa, where he, where she, he was like, "No, we didn't. We never did. We didn't." And I was like, "Methinks thou dost protest too much." I think there's definitely something there between them, um, but I, I, I think it, I think it was best that they didn't focus on that and that they let, they let yeah, that be I mean, something we can play with later in the season if we want to. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, obviously, it's not something that we we needed to deal with. There wasn't really time for it. And then uh, I, I think uh, there was a big question mark there, but uh, I was okay. I would have been fine to uh, have books stick around for a little while. Uh, I don't know. Uh, He's I don't know back, exactly. Though. He's in all the pictures. He's coming back. Yeah, I mean, Obviously. I would expect him to be there, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, and uh, I wanted to know what uh, you thought, uh, Sal. Were you surprised to see him uh, go? And uh, I, uh, I. I, uh, yeah, I'm just wondering, did you think that maybe that he was going to stick around for a little while or did just logic dictate that he couldn't stick around? It's a little bit of a dicey connection. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to kick, I'm going to kick him out for a second. And then hopefully when he comes back, uh, he will be there. There's, it was a little loud and, uh, he, it kept pausing a little bit, which is, uh, Oh, it's part of the frustrations with doing uh, doing shows this way. But, uh, this internet show. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. It's fine, you know. But uh, I I don't know if uh, what your connection is like now, Sal. But uh, it's it's as though you just put up a picture. You know, it's like you've put up a still. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm wondering, actually, if uh, why don't you uh, click off your cam? Why don't you click off your camera and see if the connection's a little bit better, Sal? Can you, uh, there's a little button at the bottom that says stop cam. If you could try that, then maybe if we just, uh, just speak. With you. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you got most of what I just said. All right. Well, now he's gone entirely and I didn't even do that. So, uh, so can you, can you put up a Mike, Michael B's, uh, comment from 3 26 PM? I think that, that, that is worthy of of consideration. It's okay. true. A girl okay. jumps nine hundred years into the future. She needs to adjust before she goes looking for the for the for D. Day. And mm -hmm. um, Michael B, I'm with you. It was a year. 
I'm pretty sure that at some point, and look, I mean, there's there's plenty of uh, life forms you could be uh, on a shuttle with, but uh, where maybe you wouldn't think about it. But we saw him with his shirt off. Okay, you know? we was so, thinking. I was thinking about it. I know I wasn't going to be alone with him for a year and not yeah, I mean, enjoy that. <laughs> I mean, you know. So uh, I don't yeah. know. But uh, I thought it, I thought it was uh, interesting. Anyway, I wanted to make sure we touched on that before we then turn the turn the page and uh, head towards episode four, uh, which I do think it, it, it is interesting. You know, uh, first of all, getting to to really deal with the trill, um, it it was a little bit questionable. Uh, just the whole idea that Michael was the one to go down uh, to the planet, but from a story standpoint it's a great fit, but there was a little bit of a logic jump before it even happened. I'm like, wait, really? So the doctor's not going to go down with her. Especially uh, since they started with the, the medical officer's log. We were seeing everything through his point of view. And then suddenly to have Michael go down to the surface instead of the doctor, like, it's like, wait, why? Did, no, that makes no sense. Like, so I, you know, obviously it was a whatever they needed to do to get Michael to be the, you know, she's the protagonist. So obviously she has to go. But it was kind of like, come on, dude. We just watched the doctor walk through the entire ship and yeah. have, a, you know, like have a meeting with Saru about people's moods and attitudes. And mm, no, that that was that was that was weird. But even even to me, just the whole like. I just kept thinking, I, I, my, my partner and I had to pause, and we were like, this this spore drive is going to be convenient AF all season. Cause, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> like, they're like, like oh. no, di no dilithium? Don't worry. No worries. We're just going to go ahead and spin ourselves over to trail, and uh, all will be well. It's all good, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so uh, once again, uh, let's uh, let's see how it works now, uh, Sal. So that we don't have a repeat of the same problem we yes, had sir. before. Uh, as much as America wants to see you, let's try clicking off your camera and see if the connection is better. Uh, if we just have the uh, the audio, so just the the little uh, how, stop how camera. Now? Well, it you look. You, I can still see you. Yeah, the connection seems okay. But uh, it, it, it was very spotty before. So if you turn off the camera, right. I think we won't have to worry about it. And uh, America will just have to deal with the fact of uh, not getting to see him. So uh, I, for what we were talking about, uh, Craig Robinson kicks in. Uh, Culber needed to stay in the ship to help everyone keep, level, keep everyone level-headed. Oh, I understand that. It just seemed like the doctor would be the, the logical one to go down to the go down to the planet with her, you right. know, but right. uh, I, I was, I was willing to take the jump and we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll sort of handle the two storylines separately. Uh, Cause I want to deal with getting to see the uh, you know, getting to see the trills and uh, Sal, I did like, uh, you know, look, it was, it was a very star Trek, you know, when the representative it, it basically, it, it, you know, is talking to them as a hologram on the, on the bridge and is just yes. like, you know, so peaceful and calm and so happy to see them. I was just like, well, you know, you just know that, okay, this is Star Trek. Was, this is, this right. is minute. Eight, yeah, this is like minute. Yeah. This is minute six. Obviously this you isn't going to go a well, hard right? left turn right. coming. Yeah. yeah hard left really. turn coming. <laughs> exactly. Very, very hard now? left turn. Yeah, no, no, we hear you fine. As long as you hear us, uh, this is okay, much better than before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Should so, I try the cam uh, again or not? We're gonna. No, no, let's leave it for right now, but uh, we'll make sure that people okay. get to gaze into your eyes before uh, we wrap up. Uh, talk a little bit about sort of the right, I'm gonna start the realization. My nose then. Great. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> just uh, just uh, if, if you're going to pull a Jeffrey Tubin, please make sure you tell us uh, that that uh, before you put the camera on. We want to be prepared for that. We don't want to be surprised. I'm crawling but... up my own Jeffrey's tube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you call it, a Jeffrey's tube. Jeffrey's but in any case, tube. nice. <laughs> uh, tell us uh, about that that's interaction. Right. You know, they uh, they take the shuttle down. And uh, I'm always uh, a little mesmerized by the decision to take a shuttle Why didn't instead they beam of beaming. Why didn't they beam down? That's right where I beam? want to start. I, they, they didn't give us a reason. Yeah. Sometimes you'll just get a line oh, of like, 
uh, too many uh, tachyon emissions or uh, uh, there's a radiation right. storm. There's distortion. We can't get a signal. That's yeah. why. But right. yeah, but Something. there was none yeah. of that this time. Did, did, right. They, yeah. they, were just, get... they were just like, meh. Yeah. So no. that right there. But uh, obviously they needed the device. And it's, of, and it's uh, 900 years in the future. Yeah. I know they have. I mean, they this have like is a portable transporters now. This is an era where personal, right? There are personal transporters. So exactly. The trill be like, what is that? A shuttlecraft? What is this? A thousand years ago? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, so wait a minute, you're going to pull up here in your VW bug with a Grateful Dead sticker on the back. Yeah. He's Burnham. Yeah. Uh, although the belching, the belching, spilching smoke. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. It's diesel. <laughs> but uh, give us your thoughts, Sal, on the interaction Diesel, once they get right. down to the planet. It's yeah. clean. Yeah, once they get down to the planet. I thought it was cool. I, you know, I thought it was cool. I thought it was really nice when they asked her to say her names and she could only name one. And, you know, and, oh. you know, and then they, you know, they really were hard on her. Um, um, by the way, I don't you know, know this to be an true. Abomination. But um, Michael B says, I don't think you can use a transport on a trill, but I mean, Jed Zia definitely transported, unless I'm yeah. really not remembering that entire I, series. I, re I, I remember Jed yeah. Zia transported, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so um, it's a great theory. I just, yes. you know, and all they would have had to do was uh, to explain, you know, uh, some some reason that, you know, yeah, because of the way that she, well, you go with that, but you can give something. Something about the way that she she's you know not not settled as a host. They there was a concern about using. They didn't give us anything. But anyway, right. um, yeah, I anything, I, I did anything, like I, anything. I did like the moment when the. Go ahead, Sal. There's a bit of a lag here. I'm sorry. I couldn't. You, the end of your question dragged out. That's all right. Well, let me uh, hear. It. Let me uh, steer it towards uh, Nikki. Your it. thoughts on all of that, sort of, <laughs> you know, uh, he heading down there, and uh, you know, the interaction with the the trills, and and as uh, Sal referenced, this uh, basically the uh, town villagers with the pitchforks and the torches. Uh, you know, literal, they were... literal pitchforks. Like yeah. they look like literal pitchforks. Um, I was, I was super yes, excited first of all to see. They were. I wonder Karen... if that was that probably wasn't an accident. No, it probably, <laughs> probably wasn't. Not. I was really excited first of all to see that uh, leader Pav was played by Karen Robinson from Schitt's Creek, who plays Roz on uh, Roslyn on on Schitt's Creek, who is a favorite character of mine on that show. So I was happy to see her. Um, I thought it was also, you know, like. You know, we like obviously there was going to be a problem, right? She's hum a human host. We don't know what to do with that. We've never seen that before. We're our the the supreme leader of the trill is a is some kind of faith leader as well. So like they're very all of it's very sacred to them. So I can see, you know, like it made sense and it was and it was predictable, of course, that that, that she would say no. This this creature must leave. You know, must leave the planet immediately. Um, I I love that, you know, then Michael just sort of shows up. And Michael just sort of says, you know, we're not going back to our 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 shuttle right now. And of course, you know, the, the pitchforks come out. Um I also thought it was really interesting that Michael was not Michael shot first. Like if we wanna like like let's get like let's let's have that conversation. Who shot first? You know, Michael shot first. So well, well I mean she was cornered. Yeah, but yeah, and, and uh, as it was pointed out, but it's also like in that situation, she kind of has to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's also no federation. <laughs> they weren't part of it. So she's like, look, they got these uh, glowing pitchforks. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to do and what we got to do. It was very, no, no, uh, no, no, easily, right. very clearly no, 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 established. No. Yeah, but it was very clearly established that she stunned them. So to me, that's all right. You know, yeah. it was a, she she at least stunned them. Uh, what did you think about that, Sal? Was that... Uh, was was that act? Was that an action uh, unbecoming a Starfleet officer? It's one of those right up to the toes on the line thing, you know. Uh, she was cornered. She was being threatened. So, but there is, I recall, 
a lot of instances where they would say Starfleet never fires first. And she wasn't fired upon. So I don't know, but you know, for the purposes of the of the action, she had to do that. Yeah, no, no. I, I think she was justified. It is not to the letter of the law, but uh, yeah. I think that that's maybe more of a testament too that a, a year outside of Starfleet has led to her, you know, making decisions a little differently than she did before. Which I mean, she, you know, she attests to uh, yeah. in her conversation with I Saru. Mean, well, I- I made the joke la- a couple weeks ago that sometimes uh, Sonequa Green's acting is a little, um, a, a little Shatner esque, um, and but I over also the top. see yes, yeah. over the top. But but I also see some Kirk parallels with her, like that, like she's not, you know, she is not someone who, um, you know, she she does what she feels is right, and it's not necessarily always following the rules, and and I, I feel like she's got a little bit of that Kirk wild streak in her. And, and I even feel like that's maybe part of why she knew she wasn't ready to be captain. You know, like we can't have, you know, like at this point in, in the timeline to have a captain who is uh, as kind of like wild and erratic as Michael would have sort of made uh, Kirk less interesting, right? Like, w- like it would have made Kirk less, um, less of a, a a wild boy or a bad boy in, in his awesome captainness. So I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there's some similarities between them in terms of their temperament. And I, and I see them kind of holding Michael back a little bit. So she's not too Kirkish. Yeah. And I, I think that it it's also a testament to look, we evolved from Kirk to Picard who Picard usually didn't leave the bridge. You know, the captain didn't usually go down as part of the away team. That was, uh, that's what Riker was there for. Right. And this period, one, there's no Federation so far off I- into the future. And Craig Robinson kind of says it perfectly. She's more yeah. of a maverick since the time jump. I definitely agree with Absolutely. that. Uh, and then, uh, so I don't know. I think that uh, the, you know, her behavior, I think is, is certainly something that, we're going to see more of, there'll probably be a moment where she reacts too impulsively and there are problems for it. This didn't really seem to set back the situation they were in. Uh, I wanted to talk about sort of, you know, Adira coming to terms with her, you know, the, the host and actually merging with it, which I thought that this was some great character stuff, her with her boyfriend and, you know, just sort of this idea that he had newly become a host and then, you know, there was the, whatever the explosion was on the ship. So then she took over, you know, pretty shortly thereafter. Uh, and I thought that this was, for me, this was a great scene. And uh, it was it was really well done. It was very moving. I thought that, uh, you know, it, it definitely made me feel for Adira. But then you're when you have the moment where all of the past hosts sort of, the, well, the past symbiotes, I guess, you know, the past hosts of the symbiote, they basically all welcome her. I thought that yes. was great. I thought that, uh, again, a very Star Trek thing, sort of this inclusion of, yes, of course you're one of us, even though you're human, you know? Uh, I don't know. I I, uh, I really liked I, I really liked that whole sequence. I mean, I thought the reveal maybe took a little while, but uh, I thought it was, it was a great explanation for who she is, why she didn't know, and how going forward she's going to be fully merged with uh, all the hosts. Uh, Nikki, I'll let you first respond to that. And then, uh, Sal, I'll let you, uh, chime in. Yeah, I, I loved, uh, I loved, first of all, the discovery that, you know, it was a memory of her, of her own trauma that was keeping her from connecting to the host and the memory. Um, I also, uh, this actor, this act performer, um, who plays Adira uses they, them pronouns and their name is Blue Del Barrio. And, um, and I, wow. Love, yeah. Um, <laughs> blue. But I, but I love blue. that name. Blue, yeah. Blue Del yeah. Barrio. And then, and then somehow that name then, didn't yeah. jump out in the credits. And then, and then, and then, yeah. then, then Adira's boyfriend is named gray and has blue hair. So that was interesting. Um, but <laughs> I, I was so moved by, I, I thought that their romantic question, their romantic connection their uh, affection for each other was so adorable and it made me 
it made me really like Adira. Like it made me, like I liked her, I got her. And then I also, I just happened to also really love the actor who plays Bray. Um, that's Ian Alexander, um, who is a transgender actor uh, who was in the OA. You might know them from um, from the OA. Um, but but I just it made me feel I, I like I loved. I, it was just so sentimental. Like I was just sitting here like all teary, and um, and I also loved that we're gonna get to keep seeing them together, and that is exciting to me. Um, I don't know how they're gonna explain it or why that's possible, but. Um, but I, they were so sweet together that I was like, oh, I want I want more of this. Yeah, now, oddly enough, that will be explained by Tachyon Fields. I don't know why. It's just going to be <laughs> what it is, you know. Because the Tachyon Field fixes everything. Yeah. Uh, Sal, what did you think sort of for the, uh, basically, the Trill reunion? Oh, the, I like the Trill reunion. You mean when all the hosts... Come yeah, when they're the they're all standing there, you know, it's sort of like once they've dived into the pool and they sort of accept her, and uh, you know, it's like I said, it's a very yeah. Star Trek. No, like, I, yes, of course. We're and all they had that like Wakanda moment where they were yes, all that like, was very yeah. Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, that a couple was very of things nice. here. I I really yeah. like that. Um, Michael B though, with the practical question, uh, how in the hell did that rock crash into the ship? Where was the force field? Great question, Michael B. I'm glad you asked the hard questions. Uh, these are all but, this is, these are great questions. Yeah, I I never considered that question, and now that you have brought it up, I am bothered. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I am, but I am I am sincerely bothered by it now. You know, here's, here's my theory: the uh, shields were not working due to tachyon fields in the system. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure tachyon that fields. that had them something tachyon, to do with it. Man, them tachyon yeah. transmissions or emissions, they be they be getting in the way all the time, them tachyons. Uh, William Walton wants to know if this will see lead to us seeing other aliens as hosts for trills. Uh, Craig doesn't see them getting to that backstory. I think that that's probably more something that will be explored, you know, maybe through novels or comic books or things, you know, maybe future series. Uh, you know, maybe we'll... Or, or, you know, I mean, if look, if Adira is a member of the crew of Discovery, then I think we can really deal with more sort of, you know, Trill, trill storylines, you know, because they didn't say that they were almost extinct. They just said that their population was decimated in the burn. So uh, I, I think it, it could be interesting to see, you know, more instances yes. of, uh, of all of these things. Um, so before we move to the other storyline, I wanted to make sure that we've uh, we've given all of our thoughts. Just an overall thought for you, Sal. Uh, Adira sticking around. She's gonna. She feels like her place is with the Discovery. Uh, do you feel that? Uh, are you comfortable with that decision, or did you think we had too many damn characters already as it was? Ah, see, I thought you were stumped. I, but then I think was, we have too many damn characters. As too many as damn characters. Because yeah. Because there. Are, no, no, no. There is so many. They they went they went through all the trouble last season of making Detmer and the other woman, you know, and they, they've they really done a lot of work to service these elementary characters. And instead of deepening that, the, you know, with Saru and the relationships with him and Burnham, and I think that Georgie was not in service right now. And instead they're introducing three new characters. So these three characters, their backstory has to be serviced. We need to know their motivations. We need to know what they want. And I think that takes away from the, from the Star Trekiness, if that's a word, of the bridge crew. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm torn between how much I love that original interaction of just the, the main characters and introducing, you know, putting more. You know, at a certain point, the stew has enough potatoes in it. That's fair. You know, yeah, I, when you I add disagree. more, you just get uh, there's less there's less meat, and more potatoes. I yeah. disagree. I feel like in the first two seasons, we didn't really get to know the crew. Like we we got to know Michael, we got to know a couple other people, Tilly. You know, we got to know a few people, but we didn't get to know the crew. We didn't get to see the crew united and like like we didn't have that sense of family with the crew that we had with the Next Generation. 
And so I feel like this, them going into the future makes them a family in a way that they never would have been, they may not have been before. But also I think we need characters who are from this future to help us integrate into the future. Like how, I don't see a way Discovery could even, like it would have been, Discovery would have been completely destroyed immediately if we didn't have these new characters. We have to have some guides in the 900 years future, right? So I don't think a few extra characters is really gonna, you know, wow. especially since especially since I didn't feel like we had a whole sort of sense of a cohesive family crew anyway. So now we get to build that. We're gonna get to see them build and we got to see them start to sort of um, build that sort of loving family vibe as a, you know, as a crew. Um, but now we have these, they also have some guides to see them through yeah. what it means to be together in the nine, in 900 years in the future. Yeah. I mean, I kind of split the difference between the two of you in that I, I, it's I interesting. Think I think that we'll see some good stuff from it, but then also, uh, I feel like it's more time we could have gotten. We're just starting like, you know, Detmer has never been more interesting than she was in this episode. So it's like, Oh, I'd like to see more right. of her, but now her screen time is probably going to be a little bit less. Uh, what's your final thought on that, Sal? I I agree with you. Um, I, I I think that we're going to run into a problem where there's going to be crew A story, a dear and gray B story, and then something else C story, or some combination of that. And I'm more interested in the original crew than I am, you know, because it's been two seasons. Now we've got We've got four episodes of new characters. And my favorite character right now is Book because of his relationship with Burnham. What did they do over that past year? Um, well, or, we know what they didn't do. That he I mean, that was from, very or, early. You know, there's more. We know what they didn't do, right. Uh, just, uh, and Craig agrees with Nikki, seems quite tech savvy, so that'll help figure out the magic beads. I was I do, thinking I, that too. Yeah, but, I, I, do, but, I think that someone who understands this modern technology that could go a long way. Look, I'll be interested to see where it goes. You know, as we were talking about family, I think that's a great way to transition to the other storyline in the episode, which really does deal with this issue of family. Uh, the fact that Saru basically has like a Thanksgiving dinner with everyone. And it goes about as well as any of our Thanksgiving dinners go uh, with uh, some, uh, some arguing, right, uh, everybody leaving and your, and your crazy aunt walking off with the full bottle of wine. You know, yeah. it literally went like everybody's Thanksgiving dinner just a few yes. weeks away. The only thing that I wish is that the season had started a little later so that I would have watched this. That would have been a Thanksgiving that. episode. Yeah, yeah. That would have been really awesome. Yeah. I, I that should have been their, I, that should have been their Thanksgiving episode. That would have been great. Yeah. Yeah. I also I also you know it struck me how how relatable uh this this whole idea of the crew being stressed and the the crew being overwhelmed and 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 uh, how relatable it is for us right now to be watching it in the levels of stress that we're we're all dealing with um uh and and that the the solution I first of all I loved that the computer offered, first of all, that the computer was offering self-care options like walking, limited dairy, yoga, meditation, coloring books, interstellar shopping. I was like, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the exact same list. They haven't improved on the list in yeah. 900 years. Like, like they're, they're, it's the same list for self-care that we have now. Um, but then when the, the computer's voice changed, my, uh, this was another, this was another pause and my partner going, what, what? And I was like, no, remember the sphere is a part of the ship yeah. now. And, so the sphere, and, yeah. And that's part of the sphere. That's part of control. And I think that there's actually a short tracks that explains that, which I haven't seen yet. I don't know how I'm supposed to know when there's new short oh, tracks. I haven't seen it but they mentioned that there is one. Yeah, I, I have to go and look, and I'll try. If there is one, I'll watch it for next week. Or I guess we can all look for it. I, I looked, and I didn't see I didn't see new ones, so okay. I don't know. Maybe it's an older one that I didn't realize. Uh, but yeah. anyway, so yeah, I did think that was interesting. Yeah. They, they're not going to uh, put out. They're not going to put out new short tracks. I don't know. I mean, uh, they. You know, maybe they're. Yeah, but I mean, I meant newer because I hadn't it's looked not in the since middle of the season. Picard. Yeah, no, no, but oh, I mean, there could have been one okay. before the season. Right. I hadn't looked for short tracks because there was that Picard one, 
with like the two like little girls who were like fighting in school, you know, and I think that was the last one. But uh, yeah, I did. I, I look, I enjoy that dynamic. I mean, I think getting to really see the crew interact together uh, and, you know, the, the Stamets and Tilly dynamic, I think uh, continues to be great. And I, I did like sort of the, you know, her, his sort of apology where she's like, uh, I know I'm great. And he's like, I already yeah, knew, I, mean, I, already knew and, I was, I was helpful. And, and, and so he has to actually say, I didn't I knew, tell you. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that. That's, that's very much right. family. How, and go ahead. So. No, I'm. No, you, you go ahead. I didn't, I didn't have okay, a point. That's fine. Yeah. So, and I, I thought that, uh, look, I, I gave uh, a lot of credit to Detmer here because yeah, it's like, that's great. You do all your spore drive stuff, but somebody still needs to pilot the ship. And let's not forget episode two, that if not for her, the sh ship would have been destroyed, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think that, uh, yeah, she, just she feels didn't, like look, too, she didn't look too happy about it either. No, I mean, uh, and I honestly, I thought that her problem was something else because, you know, so did she I. had like a ringing in her ears and, you know, and Me I think too. it was I just thought it was like, the, I thought it was like, yeah, I thought that the concussion, you know, or yeah. whatever. I, they didn't I say thought it was going to be, it had but, something to do with her implants or something. Yeah. I thought um, there was something yeah. like had knocked a screw loose. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I actually, me too. I actually, I actually found it. They've never really, really explained what the implant is. No, yeah. and, and I would like to. Yeah, look, I'd love to see what that was. Um, did she get the implants actually after? Because she was on the crew of the of of the 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 Shenzo, and I think she got injuries because of Burnham, and so that's why she hated Burnham when Burnham uh, came up when Lorca brought her on to Discovery. So I think she, when we saw her in the pilot. The I first episode so. of season, yeah. I think she didn't have them actually, and it's uh, only realizing this now. So uh, somebody mm. in the chat, uh, let me know if I'm right. And uh, William Walton, one of the hardest things to do is admit you need help. Absolutely, and uh, fortunately, I don't need any help on anything, so I never have to admit it. Uh, but uh, I thought that uh, that was some nice moments, and uh, I I think that uh, I think that her coming and talking to Dr. Colbert at the end uh, is great. Because she realizes that, yeah, look, if I if I have that kind of uh, blow up at you know family dinner with the senior crew, obviously I got some stuff I'm trying to deal with. Yeah. But, uh, and the uh, you know the the idea that they had to so I don't know who said it we oh maybe Tilly we had to stop pretending so we were fine. Um, yeah. And I thought that that was that was uh, really it was so poignant for the crew, but also. I think so poignant for where we are right now, just in terms of like uh, the, the the world. Like we like like I, I I I when I when I ended that episode, I was like, wow, they didn't even know when they were making this that we were going to be in the yeah. middle of all this nonsense. Like the like like it, it felt kind of like a soothing balm. It was like. Yeah, it was I yeah, we do have to admit we're not okay, and we and and Buster Keaton movies maybe do hold up after a thousand years. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's the interesting thing because they shot a thousand this, more like fifteen hundred. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. They shot this between uh, last October and this February, so they got the the filming in right before everything really started to shut down. They had to do all their post production remotely, uh, right and the yeah. Yeah, right. Exactly. But they got, but they got everything filmed. And so it's, yeah, it just very much speaks to this idea that, I mean, look, uh, eight, eight months in, we, we have to be some level of okay. Us as, as, uh, as humans <laughs> here on earth, I was going to say Americans, but it's a much bigger problem than us. And, you know, I think that uh, it's very relatable uh, for those of us here in the United States, maybe also very relatable. Uh, if you feel like if you just stay up for another 20 minutes, maybe they'll call Georgia, you know, that sort of a thing, you know? So uh, I, I think it, it, it very, you know, <laughs> even though I would have liked it to be the, uh, the Thanksgiving episode, it felt uh, very current uh, for it everything. It really did. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, it was a lovely way. I felt like, you know, without yeah. even knowing well, it, they were giving, without even knowing it, they were sort of giving us permission to sort of say, "Hey, we're, 
we're not okay either. And like, they didn't, they didn't even know ahead of time that they were going to be doing that for us. But I, I, yeah. I was really um, pleased with that. And I, and I, and when it was over, I felt a little better. Like I, yeah. I, like after that episode, I felt a little better in life. And I was like, okay, Star Trek making me feel better. Like the good old days. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it also made me feel like I could have wine with lunch, but what were you going to say, Sal? You were talking about. Know, I'm. Uh... Do you like seeing the family dynamic? I think that uh, you know this this setting of watching them all together. I like. I, where... I like seeing the family dynamic. I I like the, I like that. I mean the I mean I always go back to TOS, and you know Kirk and McCoy and Spock were a family. You know, and they're trying to. I like that they're trying to recreate relationships and they're doing it on a much, much larger scale with a much richer palette. You know, they're uh, all, you know, more diversity and, you know, 60 years later, the world is an entirely different place. And for Star Trek to be a mirror of that world, it's very difficult. Uh, in a writer's room to get out of your head and to stop looking at what's on the paper, what's on the screen, and to incorporate your own experiences and your own feelings into, into the script. And I, I feel that they're doing that. I don't always like it, but that's okay. Not always, you know, it's not always about me. Yeah, but I think that, uh, you know, the idea that uh, they do need to be able to work together if they're going to succeed and sort of, you know, the the high stress level of jumping 920 years in the future. Uh, I think it's great that they were able to kind of take a beat and, it you know, just judging from the commercial for next week, it'll be a, a lot more of sort of an action packed sort of, you know, uh, more Star Trek y feel for what they're going to deal with uh, as they try to find this federation. So I think that when we look back on the season and as a whole, we're really going to appreciate that we had this episode. Uh, so I, I agree with uh, any and uh, all of that. And I was glad. I thought that yeah, uh, there was feels, a lot of great character like a, building like a, for everybody. Like a jumping off point. Yeah. No, I think that that's going to, you know, uh, bring us uh, through the rest of the season. Well, uh, I think that uh, for me, uh, I enjoyed both yeah. of these episodes. Uh, episode three was was definitely the most Star Trekky of the season, but I do like stuff like watching our characters uh, have, you know, have a dinner together. I mean, if you look at like other, you know, other uh, other universes, other mediums, the uh, issues of the X-Men where they just like, you know, played baseball together and went to the bar afterwards. Those are probably some of my favorite ones. You know, you don't always have to save the universe. You know, it, it helps us care more about you. No. Uh, yeah. You know. They're more real that way. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Um, anyway. So uh, I believe that uh, that kind of buttons everything up. Uh, I, you know, I'll let, uh, each of you let people know where they can find you. If you have a final thought you want to throw in there, uh, you're certainly more than welcome to. Uh, Nikki, if you have any final thoughts, and then also let people know where they can find you. Sure. Uh, I will say the these were my two favorite episodes, I think, of Discovery, period, these last two. Um, and I'm so excited now about where this season can go and and the possibilities with all these new characters and this new time period. I'm worried about all the weird inconvenient, the weirdly convenient, true convenient things that are going to happen. But, um, but I'm excited. Uh, and you can find me at uh, NikkiBaileyComedy.com or on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at NikkiBailey underscore. And uh, Sal, uh, final thoughts, uh, thoughts heading into the rest of the season and tell people where they can find you. All righty. Well, I am the one, I, I don't want to be negative, but I have a problem with time travel in general. I mean, they're in yeah. it. Um, but, but once you say, all right, we're, we're a thousand years in the future, anything goes. And I think that's kind of 
writerly. You know, I can see people's fingerprints on it. You know, this makes it easier for us. I don't know going to distract me from the rest of the season. I'm not going to stop watching. Uh, um, but I, I thought it's worth mentioning. Um, sure. My favorite episode was the third episode. Uh, last night I was kind. Of, last night I was kind of underwhelmed. I know that you know. I think for episode five, we're getting back into star. Looking forward to that. And I yeah, think they'll absolutely. be on the right track after that. Um, you can find me. You can find me at D Weiss Comedy. Also on Instagram at D Weiss Picks. P I X. Uh, yes, exactly. And uh, as you can see on the screen, you can find me at Christian. Not P I C S. Right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian DMZ. And if you're enjoying this show, uh, please subscribe to the Blackcast YouTube channel, where in just five short hours, you'll be able to see myself, Rachel Goodman, and the world famous Hubby Joe joining us for the Mandalorian After Show Season 2. Episode two, uh, lots to talk about. And yes, Baby Yoda was at the forefront of uh, the conversation for this episode. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that or watch the archive anytime. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to Nikki Bailey. Thanks to Sal, David Weiss himself. And uh, until next time, live long and prosper. <laughs>